This is the Kia Soul Turbo. It's brand new. It's a new trim level for an old platform. Now we've already covered the Kia Soul EV, so you can take a look at that video There's in a lot more detail. We're not gonna rehash all of that, but let's check out some of the unique things about this model. The exterior of the Kia Soul. This has been the, the brunt of a lot of jokes. A lot of it has to do with Kia's own marketing and just plenty of people think it looks hideous. Now, if you're, whether you like it or not, there's something to be said about this. It's kind of the last of the bread box looking compact CUVs, hatchbacks, whatever you want to call it. And it's one of the few vehicles that maintains some quirky character. It's all about a little bit of personality here from the front end design to the back end design. And I think that's why it maintains some of its popularity. I hope that Kia decides to keep some of this uh, in the next generation model while improving some of the dynamics of the vehicle. And when you come to the back of the Kia Soul, this is where, I mean, this car becomes extremely practical. And that's because you have a hatchback or a lift gate that is extremely light. The manual operation is so good uh, and it's just easy to get in and out of here. Uh, this is a good mix between a hatchback and a CUV and that's one of the best parts about this. And of course, you know, you have this cargo tray which can be removed with the seats folded down. It, you can do a lot of stuff in here. The interior space of the Kia Soul, even this new turbo is, well, it's last generation. It's been around for a long time. So what you get is a lot more simplicity. You're not littered with all the technology that most of the newer cars are. You don't have blind spot monitoring. You don't have frontal crash mitigation. You don't have rear parking sensors and all the gadgets that you typically are flooded with. This just has infotainment, the standard UVO stuff that you see on all the Kias. Uh, and pretty much the only other thing you're going to find is a center LCD screen, which you can kind of change some settings of the car and traction and stability control button. But other than that, this is a pretty pure driving experience. Well, for the most part, as much as a modern car can be. Now, in terms of interior quality, it's, you know, it's pretty low rent. The door cards are very hard plastic. There's not a lot of soft touch. There's not a lot of contouring in the plastics. And there's an overuse of this piano gloss black, which is all over the place and it's super reflective. Now the upper part of the dash, they've replaced the gauge cluster hood uh, with this kind of orange stitched material. And then of course the steering wheel has a flat bottom, uh, which is really nice. And that, that's probably about the best part of the driving experience. But other than that, you know, it is what you expect for the price range. It's you know, entry level stuff and it's not that bad. It's all ergonomically laid out and there's nothing frustrating about the usability of it. I think getting in and out of the back seats is pretty good. This roof line doesn't totally slope down or come down at the end. So ingress and egress isn't as bad as you would think. I think the overall space is what you'd expect in kind of the compact CUV world. I mean, it's not gonna blow you away, but if you're like, I'm five foot nine, I really don't have too much of an issue. The seats, much like in the back and the front, they're very flat. The bolstering is not on the aggressive side. So if you're one of those type of people that don't want a sporty seat or you're a little bit wider, bigger hips, bigger butt, uh, you're not gonna have too many issues here. Straight from hot import nights. Yeah, well, that's what you like. Okay, the turbo. This is pretty much, it's this Kia Soul's going away party because this is kind of in the end of its life cycle, oh, this no, car. Oh, really? Yes. They finally added the 1.6 liter turbo that they had in the Veloster. And I'm going to say something very basic about this. We complain about modern cars being overly complicated. And people have asked, well, what would you recommend that's new, that's simple? Well, Aside from that Scion IA, or now the Toyota IA, this is absurdly simple. You look at the inside, there's no blind spot monitoring, no radars, no How any of How can you drive without that? I don't know, I, I get in it and I just have to get out because I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then you look at the underbody of this, look at this, you can get your hands up in here. This cover is not that intrusive. Uh, it's not completely covered up all the way front to back. This is probably one of the more simple cars and it feels very light when you drive it there's it's not it's not like the modern Hondas and Kias so if you're looking for some basic transportation this is it we've already been underneath the Kia Soul EV 
obviously this whole part of that car was battery back. Now you get to see the beauty and artistic work of having a exhaust system. And they did a fancy one at that. Yeah, this is fancy. I'm Look surprised at that. you don't take your arm and get a freaking scar from that real I quick. do. I want a tat. Uh, I want a real nice tat. What does it say? Kia PSM 70. So you know you would be high performance. Underneath, it's all stamp steel. It's, you know, again, this is basic motoring. Simplicity. Now, if you're in a salty climate uh, in the Midwest, you've had some Real interesting Hyundai's and Kia's in here rotted out. No. Not only the BMW's rot out. Yeah. All the German cars are the ones that have the rust problems. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so uh on to the back, Scott. Let's have a look there. Look at I like this little that must be aero treatment right there so the air can flow through the hangar. Scott <laughs> What are you doing? Are you fucking yawn? What are you yawning about? This thing's tough as nails back here. We should be driving it, not looking at We're it. We're going to be driving it real soon because I'm tired of looking at it. What is this? It looks like uh, a pull-up bar. I think that's what it's for. Yeah, pull-ups. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to try it on this rack. Why? Because isn't that leaking hydraulic fluid? Yeah, it's getting replaced. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to have a shiny new rack so I can put my new sports cars up <laughs> there. I well, got... They should go up no problem without any blocks on the new one. Yeah, we'll see about that. Mm-hmm. Plenty of room for an all-wheel drive conversion. Yeah, or a rear-wheel drive conversion. Even better. Rear engine. Put an H22 with a manual transmission. <laughs> oh, no, that's going in the Odyssey out there. <laughs> Is he really serious? He wants to do a, an H22 in an Odyssey? Oh, he doesn't want to, but he said that there's a kit out there so you can do it on the first-generation Odyssey. I'm not even going to address that any further. So let's get down to it. This is just as simple as it can be. Yes, the torsion beam doesn't feel good. This is a last generation Kia. It doesn't ride the best. You get a lot of choppy ride, kind of like you did on the first model year Veloster before they started to change things. Uh, it's not the best over you know, broken pavement, but it is what it is in this price range. Let's take a look under the hood, Scott. It's, this is, you know what, this is the SST for getting those stuck oil caps off. You just pop her off. Scott. You have a 1.6 liter turbo in here. This is new for the soul. What do you think? It looks pretty tough. Well, it is tough. This is the same motor we talked about in the Veloster that they spent 50 to 60 million dollars in development. And now it's, and now it's going in the garbage? No, no, it's stick, sticking around. Oh, it's going around. It's, it's done quite well and there are a lot of tuning options for this now as well. I don't know how that would work. On yeah, this I would go with twin turbos and Oh, you got plenty of room back there? Yeah, put what, quad turbos, one for each cylinder? Nah, twins is enough. Okay. Four throttle bodies. Individual? Mm-hmm. You know they're not, they're doing away with throttle bodies now, at least Nissan is. So, I think that's, I think you I read something about that, but I don't remember what the hell I read. Don't worry about it. That's... According to people online that watch our videos, think that we want, we'd want carburetors back. I do. Yeah, oh, you do? You want mm -hmm. to rejet some cars? Yeah. yeah I That's did. when cars were cars. <laughs> now you sound like you're 90. That's garbage. I'm not talking about This is feels really good in this car. And you want to know why it feels great? Because it's lightweight. But yes, check out the Kia Soul Turbo. I think this is kind of a, a bow out for this generation. I'll be curious to see what they do with Pardon the Pardon me. Can, you, can you, we do a retake? No, who are you, who are you messaging? You got a potential buyer for <laughs> What happened? Oh, just a, a, a funny text message. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your text message. Okay, can we talk again? What were you saying about no, this? No, I'm just saying this is the final bow-out edition for the Kia Soul. This is kind oh, of... Oh, I thought it was a Nissan Juke. It's a Kia? The Kia Soul Turbo, and one of the best parts of this vehicle overall is just that. This turbocharged 1.6 liter with the dual clutch transmission. It transforms a car that is 
rather mundane, economical, into something that I think will surprise a lot of people that get into this for the first time. The second and most important part of this car compared to all the other Ego cars out there is you get into some of these modern compacts and now you're stuck with a CVT transmission and it strips away about every single fun or uh, interesting aspect of driving a car. And then you get in here with a dual clutch and it's not the fastest dual clutch transmission ever, but it is leagues better than pretty much every CVT that's out there. It's quick to upshift, it's quick to downshift. The manual control of it is average. Uh, you don't have paddle shifters and I'm not quite sure why they left that out other than, well, probably transmission longevity. But when you put it in manual mode on the console, going up and down gears, it feels like a manual transmission. It feels that you get that same sense of engine braking, the same sense of downshifting smoothness and directness from it. And it, it's really a very good part of the Kia Soul Turbo. The worst part about this Soul is the ride quality. And it is horrible. I feel like I'm gonna get a, a compression fracture of my spinal cord or, or my spine in here. It just, you know, you can tell this is an older Kia Hyundai chassis here. It just, they didn't know how to set up the suspension. It feels like there's absolutely no stroke in the dampers. It just, you know, crashes over every bump. And as this vehicle ages, guaranteed, it's gonna rattle like crazy. Now, you know, on smooth pavement, you don't notice it, but in here, this is a really, really annoying ride. Now, when you transition back on the smooth pavement in terms of handling, I'm in manual mode. I have traction stability control off, so let's see how this does. Auto up shifts. This thing is so quick. I can't believe how fast it is for what it is. It feels so light, but again, it's just kind of ruined by the fact that the, the dampers and the suspension and the torsion beam rear end, it, it strips away all the potential fun by not particularly handling all that well, namely with the in the understeer department uh, and some of the body roll. <laughs> The conclusion of this Kia Soul Turbo. I think the platform as it stands is fundamentally flawed uh, in terms of chassis dynamics, suspension setup, uh, some quality issues, just it feels kind of cheap. The, even when you lift up the lift gate, the doors, all of that, but that's also part of its charm because it also maintains that level of lightness. It feels quick on its feet. It's fun to drive. It has character, personality, and now with the turbo motor and the dual clutch transmission, it's pretty damn fun to drive. And I think that's gonna be a winning formula for somebody, or actually a lot of people, that continue to ask what's an affordable, uh, non-overly complicated, overbearing vehicle to buy for somebody who just wants cheap transportation. I think this and the Toyota IA are kind of two of the best examples of cheap, fun motoring that are kind of currently on the market.